Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham. This is that real shit, not that fake shit. The only radio show that's not afraid to tell you the truth about the game. This is the Bad Boy Radio Show. Remember, the truth is inside you. Yo, yo, what's poppin'? What's going on? It's your boy, Mr. Locario and Miles Cunningham. You have tuned into the Bad Boy Show. All right, Miles yeah. is poppin'. What's going on, man? How's life? Not much, man. Just trying to take it easy, man, because I've been busy as a mug. I feel you. And killing it from both ends. You know I feel you. That's how, it's, that's how it's supposed to go. That's how it's supposed to be. You know what that's I mean? That's true. That's exactly that's how true. it's supposed to be. But today we're going to be talking about reasons why you get rejected. All right? So, and, and by the way, um, I have a bad boy membership program, um, you know, that tells that, you know, teaches you about handling and dealing with rejection and some ways to basically avoid rejection. You understand? So right. you, you guys got to get on that bad boy membership. You feel what I'm saying? So we're going to be talking about that today. But before we get into that, you know, we're going to, you know, get into some news and all the other stuff. But we're going to take a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to get into all the crazy stuff going on in the news. All right. So you guys are listening to the bad boy show. <laughs> Hey, what's up? It's dating and life coach, Mr. Locario. Go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my bad boy membership program. In this program, you'll receive 45 through 90 minute, easy to follow, step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract, date, and have sex with beautiful women. Join the bad boy membership today by going to badboymembership.com. That's badboymembership.com. Yeah, what up? We back. We are back. All right. Yeah, man. So, you know, there, there's some there's some stuff that's been happening in the news, right? So, first thing we got to talk about is uh, this LeBron James thing where in his Los Angeles home was vandalized by a racial slur. So, I think what if somebody spray painted a uh, nigger on his, what was it, on his house or some shit like that? Is that what's the story? Where he got, you yeah, know, he got he got one of those big like, like privacy privacy gates. You know those 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 gates that slide open mm-hmm. that you would see at probably like a junkyard or or something like that. Right, right. I mean, of course, it's nicer because it's in front of a house. But the fact, the point I'm trying to make is that you can't see through it. It's like a flat piece of metal. You know right, what I'm right, right. So they spray painted the word nigger on that. But it's mm. funny because nobody really saw it. Right. Um. Because it looks like his um. His his property management team they they sprayed they sprayed they you know painted right over it as soon as it happened as soon as they saw it they spray painted over it mm-hmm. they took a they said they took a picture of it and then called the cops and then they showed the cops the picture but they they um they didn't let it stay at all you know right. what I'm saying? I, I it's heard like, it. It's a, it, the situation um, looked like it happened overnight mm-hmm. and then by the time his property management got there they took care of that shit quick right you, you heard what. No, I heard a rumor that um, the the person who spray painted the nigga shit on there, it was actually yeah. um, what's his name, Michael Jordan, because he was mad at him for you know breaking his record and all that shit. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying, it might be him. You know what I mean? So you got to look at all angles. Got to look at all suspects. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm like, because <laughs> I'm like. <laughs> Cause we got you got a lot of LeBron James haters, so it could be a lot of people. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's like, it's like, damn though. It's like fucked up that you know. And but it, but this is this is what this shows you that no matter how much money you get, no matter what position you're in, you're still a nigga. That's what. That's all they. He's, they just trying to send him a reminder just in case he forgot. That's you know what I'm saying? That's, <laughs> that's what that was. He was just like, yo, you know, just in case you forgot. That you're a nigger in this society. We we want to remind you that this is what it is. So you just you know because because they was like you know basically they was like okay this nigga he he just surpassed Michael Jordan, um you know he's like basically up there so we got to take him down a peg. That's usually how it works. You know what I'm saying? Right. As soon as you start doing some good shit, 
and you start really excelling, they got to, they got to, you know, they got to bring you down because they don't, they don't want you to get too confident. You see what I'm saying? Right. That's how, right. That's how it works. Cause, cause if you get too confident, more dangerous than a confident nigga. Exactly. You got money. Exactly. They already, they already, <laughs> they already see how LeVar Ball is, is acting. They don't want a whole bunch of LeVar Balls r- running around this piece. You feel what I'm saying? Exactly. Yep. They have to shut down. The, the confident nigger. You understand? That should that would be a good title for a book, The Confident Nigger. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and, and, um, what, and what's more and what's more what's more what's even like a cooler part of the story was LeBron James's reaction. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So they they were saying how they asked him, they asked him, you know, what he, what was his feelings on it? And he mm. said, um he said as a man, you know, as being a black man in America, he's like he said he feels as if it it just shows that we're, we still have a problem in this country. Right, right, exactly. And he was saying he was saying that you know he doesn't feel he doesn't. I mean, he said he feels bad because you know it's something you know it's not nice and whatever, whatever. But he said overall, he said he's kind of um, he takes responsibility in the way that. If you know, if his house has to be vandalized for us to to remember and to recognize that there's a problem and that we need to, and there's something that needs to be fixed in our country, right? He says he, you know, he as a man, he he doesn't he doesn't um, he's not upset with the fact that it was his house that got vandalized because right. he understands that it's still a problem, and if it's his house that needs to get vandalized for us to recognize that there's a problem, then so be it, and he's right. cool with that. Right, and I really, I really thought that that was a really like, that was a real like bad boy answer. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, that was like, a real, that was like a real man answer. Some real you know shit, I mean? like, right? Exactly. But some... he didn't bother to just get all in his feelings and be like, oh, you know, the word is just so, you know, I, I was felt so bad and blah, blah, blah. nah. Right. He was just like, yo, it, 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 the reality is, is that we still have an issue in this in this country. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. Me in the position that I'm in, if they need to spray paint my my house to make sure we understand that, then that's cool with me. You feel right, me? Right. So I, I give I give LeBron James, you know, the utmost respect for that for his response to the Real situation. Talk. Cause Real it, talk. Because you got to remember, as a man, like it's not really it's not about what happened. You understand? Mm-hmm. It's about how you respond to what happened. Exactly. Don't happen anyway. Exactly. She don't happen anyway. But it's up to you to to carry yourself as a man mm-hmm. and to understand yourself so you know exactly how to respond to a current situ to a given situation right. and always remember that you're you're trying to um make the best of any situation mm-hmm. if you're if you're a positive person if you know you got a, you got a certain amount of confidence that you're trying to move in a certain way it doesn't really matter what happens because right. if, if you understand yourself then you understand then no matter what happens i'm gonna make this Figure out a way to make this situation work for me, or figure out a way for me to see the positive side, so I can either learn something from it, mm-hmm. or do better next time, or be more prepared for the next time. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. Nah. Real talk. Real talk. Like that's that's a a good example of of manhood and being masculine. You feel what I'm saying? Because yep. you got a lot of people out here that's you know, and 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 the worst is when you when you see a dude, a guy who's supposed to be, you understand what I'm saying, a man, and he's all bitch made you feel what i'm saying and it's just like oh that shit is the worst like it's like i i have no respect for that you understand what i'm saying and it's it's terrible it's fucking terrible you know what i mean it's like it's crazy but anyway you know so in other news um nas he penned an open letter to trump and basically he's saying we all know a racist is in office you feel what i'm saying so nas he's trying to Nas is talking that shit because Nas is basically a billionaire at this point. So he he's like, I don't give a fuck. You feel what I'm saying? Like he Nas Nas got that fuck you money at this point. So he's he's really trying to I guess go in. You feel what I'm saying? But it's like we all we all know like like and this is the thing with with with, with Donald Trump. I, I always want to ask this: like is he is he a racist first? And then a businessman, or is he a businessman first and then a racist? You understand? I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm always wondering about that. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I, I, I think he's a businessman first. Right. right. I think he's a businessman first, mm. but 
you know, at the end of the day, he's a racist. Right, right, right. You like, know. like, like, because, because I mean, look, he's 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 going to the Middle East doing deals with niggas in the Middle East. Like right. those are brown people over there. Exactly. But them niggas got money. So mm-hmm. he's fucking with them. Right. Exactly. You know so first and foremost, I'm a businessman. But after we done making money, do I want to like have dinner with you? Nah. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Like. Do I like, want to come to your house and have a beer and chill? Right. Not really. Right. Like, like he'll do business with you, and then right after the, the transaction's done, he'll be like, fuck out of here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> exactly. Because if you notice, you see how he'll he'll use, like, niggas like Steve Harvey and, and uh, Kanye West for photo ops and all that bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So he's like, okay, I'm conducting business now. And after all that shit is done... You know, if Kanye or Steve Harvey trying to get this nigga on the phone, he's like, uh, yeah, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, fuck out of here. What you talking about? Like, he's on that shit. So, so yeah, you know, he, everybody knows Donald Trump is on that bullshit. And, and also, speaking on Donald Trump, let's just get to this next story about Kathy Griffith uh, being fired by CNN for her decapitated Trump picture where she had a picture of her with a, a fake, you know, Trump head that was chopped off and had blood all over it and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, people were uh, getting all mad about it and they're like, oh, my God, how could she do that? And, you know, you, she took it too far and it's such an outrage and all this other stuff. And, you know, my thing is this. What's where's the outrage for all the, the the people who's actually getting killed by these cops out here. That's what that's what I don't because they're making this a big deal. But when niggas get shot by the cops, it's like, oh, well, you know, is it just that's just how shit goes. You feel what I'm saying? So, it, you know what I mean? Like, that's so that's that's the crazy world we're living in now, where it's like that's more outrageous and that's more despicable than motherfuckers getting shot on camera you seeing them getting killed you understand what i'm saying and then the cops walk right. free you feel what i'm saying and everybody's and, and you know it's like oh well whatever you understand like but but we're, we're gonna make a whole big thing out of this shit is this it's crazy i don't i don't know i'm like that shit's whack I'm like you motherfuckers are so fucking whack man i'm like oh and what's up with kathy griffith she looks weird as fuck i don't like why she look like that? Like, I mean, I'm sure, you know, plastic surgery, whatever, but she looks, I remember at one point, I don't know, maybe like 10 years ago, I remember watching her on some show or I saw her in the media and I said to myself, I said, you know what? I'd fuck this shit out of her. You understand what I'm saying? Like I was, I was like, I would. And now I look at her and I'm just like, what the fuck is that? Like, what am I looking at? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like she's a, like, she's a, you know, she looks like now, she looks like a dude who's trying to be a woman. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck is, oh, uh, like, she's, I don't know, man. She looks weird, but she used to be, she used to be bad. She was, she's that chick that was hot in high school. You know what I'm saying? And then, right. you know, you see her years later and it's just like, yo, what the fuck happened to you? You know what I mean? Crazy. But anyway. Not- made too many changes too, too much plastic surgery right pretty much pretty much she's terrible she's terrible but i always thought her voice was annoying so i never even thought about her sexually right now <laughs> <laughs> because nah, she yo it, it was a time where she was aight though you know what i'm saying like it was a yeah. time but now the time is over it's it's a wrap <laughs> but anyway so in other news I, I thought this was funny so uh uh tiny confronts ti about his infidelity you feel what i'm saying <laughs> so i thought that shit was hilarious because it's a clip i guess they got like they got some like reality show or some shit like that yeah yeah and there it's was called, a, um, it's called tiny and ti family hustle right and so i guess they were eating dinner and she was saying yo you know you was fucking with some chick that i was working with or something and then he was like well you was fucking with some nigga i got a problem with you feel what i'm saying and so, and I think he was talking about what well, Floyd Mayweather or something like that when he was right. saying that shit. And so he was basically saying to her, like, yo, you ain't have a problem with the chick I'm fucking with, but I, you have, I got a problem with the nigga you fucking with. So what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's, what's going on with that? But it's funny though, because I'm watching this shit and I'm just like, yo, T.I., man, he, he really took one for the team, but he, he, um, you know, like he took it all the way you feel what i'm saying because i'm looking at tiny and i'm just like i'm trying i'm trying to i'm trying to find something 
to 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 like to to like be attracted to. You know what I'm saying? And Son, <laughs> how many times have I said this? <laughs> how many times have I said this shit on? I think the truth about the game, show, <laughs> the sexy party show. Yeah, I think it's a sexy party show. Yeah. <laughs> Son, and I'm a son on the bad boy show. All right. Tiny is ugly. <laughs> now listen, I'm not I'm not a shallow type of person. Right. I'm not really the person that thinks looks is like the end all be all. You understand? Right. And if I met Tiny and she was a good person, mm. I, I'm not saying I, I I wouldn't fuck with her because if you know, if a woman treats you good, right, and you know, and the sex is alright or whatever. Whatever. It, right. it could probably go down. But if you just ask me my opinion mm-hmm. on the aesthetics, like simply aesthetically speaking. Right. Yo, she is disgusting. <laughs> and, the, and the fact that she actually tried to like do, you know, because she's done some plastic surgery mm. and she wears a bunch of makeup and all of this shit. It just makes it worse, B. Right, right. Like, you, you, you I, pr- I sorry, probably said this before, too, but you remember the episode from the Twilight Zone when the people had the, had the pig face? Right, right. That's exactly what she looked like, and that's natural. Right. That's crazy. Let me tell you something. <laughs> the fact, the fact, she was probably, she must have been a down bitch, mm. because the fact that T.I. gave her a chance, my nigga. Right, right. Or it was probably one of those situations where he got her pregnant. Mm-hmm. And then she, she just, she kind of, and he was, you know, cause he was, a, he was, he was doing his thing for a minute, trying to struggle with in the rap shit. Right. So she probably held him down. Like, mm-hmm. maybe you can make it. I believe in you, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, fuck it. I'm gonna stay with it. But right. son, when you look like that and you, and you nagging me and shit, you gotta get, you gotta get cheated on. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> Yo, you gotta t- get cheated on. Cause I, I can't stare in your face while I'm fucking you. And I can't, son. I'm off. Yo, T.I. is a champion, son. Like, he... Yo, yeah, T.I. is the man. T.I. Yeah, is the man. motherfucking man, son. Like, yo, he like... Took one, he took one for all of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the team. I'm talking about a whole state, man. <laughs> Yo, T.I. is the fucking man, though. But, but what you're saying is real talk, though, because sometimes what happens is, is that, you know, you end up fucking with a chick... And, you know, like, like she, yeah, she probably held him down. You know, she was like loyal. She was there. So it's kind of like, cause if you, even, even if you look at a lot of other rappers wives, it's not like they're like super bad. You know what I'm saying? Because when these dudes was coming up and they was trying to do their thing, you know what I'm saying? They was focused on their craft, trying to make something happen. And they found that one chick who was just like willing to, to, to follow the nigga. You feel what I'm saying? And, and, and follow him as he's putting in work, which is, which is the type of chick you should be keeping on your team you, you see what i'm saying so so you know I, I would say even the lesson in this too is that a lot of you guys if you're really trying to you know get a girl or having a girl as your girlfriend or wifey or whatever because dudes be asking me this all the time you got to see is this chick down to really ride for you you feel what i'm saying because a lot of these motherfuckers out here they just all about oh she got to be a 10 she got to be a dime and all that and it's like nah you know sometimes you might get a chick who you know she's a a five and a half on a scale of one to ten or a six, but she's down as fuck. You feel what I'm saying? Like she, she's she's right. she's up there, you know, assisting you in 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 you know with your purpose. So you you can't you got to respect that shit. You feel what I'm saying? So you know that that's just you know a side note for that. So that's why that's why I can't even really because people they're like, oh, why would you know they're probably thinking why would Ti get with her? He could get with such you know a hotter chick. I'm sure he was fucking with other chicks while he was fucking with her when they first got together. But then guess what? The other chicks probably wasn't as down as as tiny. You feel what I'm saying? So it is what it is. You feel what I mean? So you can't really you know you gotta understand that part of the game because you got other rappers. If you see the, the if you see their wives, you'd be like, yo, why he with her? He could have got a bad chick. Yeah, but there's a lot of bad chicks that ain't about shit. So it, what you gonna do? Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's why they just smash the bad chicks and then they they go home to their wife. You feel what I'm saying? So you know, it is what it is. But anyway, so this next story was fucking crazy and hilarious to me. So uh, a Muslim man sued Little Caesars for a hundred million for putting pork in his pizza. So I was like, wow, this guy. Is is hustling, man. 
<laughs> because you know, it, I guess they 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 only supposed to eat what they call that like halal uh beef or some shit or some type right. of shit that they only can eat, so they can't eat the pork. And so the 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 little Caesars I think said they sold halal shit, but then they um they ended up giving the motherfuckers the pork, I guess. And so the oh, dude man. is like, "Yo, I'm suing y'all niggas for a hundred million, son." A hundred, yo, like that's crazy. Like, like imagine that's how much you offended this nigga. Like that's how much you fucked his shit up. Where <laughs> he's suing you for a hundred million. And you know what's funny about business? Because I was I was actually talking to a friend about this. He was telling me how, you know, when you do business and shit, you know, or you have a business, uh, there's times where you could actually, you know, you could get sued for this or sued for that or whatever. And he was telling me that his friend owned some business where it was like, um. Something I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was something that had to do with like people registering for some like summer camp type of shit. And they got it. You know, it's a lot of like activities and, you know, uh, exercise or some shit like that. But anyway, he was saying that people would sort of like sometime maybe get hurt or something will happen in the situation. So the nigga that owned the company, he basically said that he puts aside money you know specifically for lawsuits like he takes a portion Uh, of his money just for that like he has a a stash of money so when somebody says yo you know i'm gonna sue you he he has uh, like money there specifically to settle with these niggas so he ain't got to deal with the bullshit you feel what i'm saying and i was like that's crazy you feel what i mean like imagine you 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 don't even think about the shit that you gotta do as a business like this nigga saying i'm taking a portion of my money just for when niggas sue me. I'm like, God damn. Like, this nigga's on top of his shit heavy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Nah, real shit. <laughs> like, you yo. Have, you gotta have a marketing budget. You right. You gotta have raw supplies. You gotta pay your employees. Mm. And you gotta put away money for lawyers, B, for real. Right. It's crazy. I was like, God damn. I was like, that's some shit. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, yo, that's that's crazy. Because, so, you know, this these dudes, like, 100 million is... Cause I don't, I don't even like how much does Little Caesars pizza even make? Like who eats that shit? I don't even, cause I remember I, the last time I had that Little Caesars shit, like that shit tastes horrible to me. I don't, you know, I don't like it. You <laughs> feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't like it. It shit tastes just like bread with cheese on it. Like it's not even pizza. Like it's like pizza is bread with cheese on it, but this literally tastes like somebody gave me a slice of bread and just put a slice of cheese on it and I'm eating and I'm just right. like, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> shit is mad whack. But anyway, but before we go on break, right, we got it. We got to take a, a subscriber email. We got to, man, we have to, All right. it's important. We got to do this. All right. So this one says, Hey, Miss Lucario, I have two questions for you. First one is how do I not catch feelings when dealing with women? Uh, when I'm meeting women and having sex with them, I find myself getting attached to them when they are sexy and the pussy is good. Second is, can you go into detail about what it means to be in reaction to women? All right. So first, he wants to know how to not catch feelings. And second, he wants to know how to not be reactionary to women. All right. So the thing is this, is that in, 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 let me, let me, let me tell you guys about the feelings, right? It's not about you not catching feelings for a chick. Like you can like a chick, you can have the feelings and feel the feelings and all that other shit and be like, Oh, I really feeling this girl, whatever. The issue is how you are basically responding to that feeling. You understand? So you can catch feelings and like a chick, but then if you end up calling her every fucking day, Because of those feelings, then you're fucking up. You understand what I'm saying? If you end up simping or you end up, you know, acting needy because of those feelings, then you're fucking up. But you you can have all those feelings and still act right. You understand? And still, you know, just call her once a week, set up a time to get together, and then you see her. You understand? You can still, you know, chill with her, fuck around, and and, and do what you got to do. But if you start acting in a way where you're being, like, really needy and you're really, you know, fucking wanting to speak to her all day and all this other stuff, then that's when you're fucking up. And, 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 and also, as a dude, you know, you, you're supposed to be, you know, on your top of your shit anyway. You understand? Doing your own thing. You know, you should have things going on in your life that's occupying your time. You shouldn't be sitting there fucking, you know, laying on your back and you still in at the, staring at the ceiling thinking about some chick. You feel what I'm saying? Like, nah, you understand? Like, so you could like her, have the feelings and, you know, just, you know, do what you got to do. But 
it's all about how you're you're responding to those feelings that counts right now you were saying you know uh can I go into detail about what it means to be in reaction to women? So I'm thinking you're saying like, you know, basically you reacting to stuff they do, you understand, or being very like emotional or reactionary to what they're doing and saying, you understand? And a lot of times what it does, what it, what it is, is that you have to basically practice and be the type of person who understands that no one can really uh, make you feel anything. You understand? And this is this is something that's hard for people to understand. And I, and I keep trying to, uh, you know, like hit people home with this. You understand? And basically what that means is, is that, you know, when you're reacting to some something or somebody, let's say a chick says something or does something and you're like, oh, man, and fuck this bitch and blah, 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 blah. And, she, you know, and you feel in a certain way. All that is coming from you. You understand? Because that same girl could say the same thing to another guy and he will react totally different. You understand? So it's not the, the, the chick. It's you. It's how you're reacting to what she's saying. You see what I mean? So you have to get yourself to a point where you're not reacting, uh, you know, emotionally or reacting crazy to what the girl is doing. You understand? And that's just a, a skill that you need to have just in life in general, not even only with dealing with chicks, but just dealing with people in general. You have to be able to be composed and not, you know, be thrown off by what they're saying and what they're doing. And a lot of times the reason why you're thrown off and the reason why you are um, acting in that way is because of your ego and because of your insecurities. You understand? So a lot of let's say, for example, if you see these guys out there, they'll holler at a chick and the chick don't want to talk to them. And they'll be like, well, fuck you, bitch. Fuck, you know, fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like they're reacting in that way because of their ego, you understand, and their insecurity. So the thing is, is that, you know, if you're not, you know, living and thinking that, you know, you need to hold up this sort of false identity, then it doesn't matter what the chick does or says, because you're not trying to protect your ego, you understand? And a lot of times the reason why you're insecure is because you feel like you need to be a certain way. You feel like you need to live up to this certain type of thing. And since you're not living up to that certain type of thing, right, then what happens is, is that you think, excuse me, I'm up at bourbon. You, you have, you have to think in that, you know, well, since I'm not living up to this thing, then there's something wrong with me. There's something missing. I need to get this thing in order to feel whole and all the other stuff. So all of that shit is going on when you're talking to a chick. Anytime you talk to a chick and let's say she, uh, doesn't like give you the number or doesn't want to talk to you and you start to feel a certain way, you understand? You start to feel bad. You feel upset. Now you're, you're kicking yourself like, Oh, it's because of this, because of that. And that reaction is coming from your ego and it's coming from your insecurities. So once you work on that, then you realize that, okay, well, I don't need none of that's going to really affect me. You understand? And it's only affecting you now because of your ego and because of your insecurities. Because a lot of times what happens is, is that since you're so attached to that, uh, that feeling or the outcome of getting a girl's number, of having sex with her, of everything going in that direction, since you're attached to that and that feeling and that, that those situations are making you feel like, well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a freaking cool guy. I'm a Mac. I'm a player. You know, I'm, I'm worthy. I'm, I'm awesome now because this happened. You see what I'm saying? So then when it doesn't happen, you start to react in a certain way where you're upset and you're depressed and all this other stuff. So a lot of your reactions are, uh, are being triggered based off of what's happening outside of you. And it's being triggered because you feel you need this or that to happen in order for you to feel good. And if it doesn't happen, you feel bad. And this is why you're reacting in that way. You understand? It's it's almost like, you know, what you got to understand is that it's hard for a lot of people to, to, um, like not react because a lot of your reactions, you're conditioned to react that way. It's just like, Let's say, for example, if you if if you like, let's say somebody you're a black guy and somebody white calls you nigger, you understand? And the 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 conditioned reaction is to get mad and oh, I'm gonna fight you and I'm gonna fuck you up and blah 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 blah. You understand? So it's not the dude calling you nigger that's make that's getting you mad. You're getting mad because you feel like you have to. Uh, you know, go out there and fight him now. You feel like, oh, I ha- oh, I feel disrespected. You disrespected me, blah, 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 whatever. And even if he is disrespecting you, you don't have to react in that manner. You understand? 
it's still up to you how you react to whatever is happening outside of you. Just like we were talking about earlier with the whole LeBron James thing. Yeah, this should happen, but how you reacting to that? You understand? And it's about you uh, being able to to come up with a reaction or have a reaction that is not being triggered by what happens, but it's coming from you in an authentic way. So even if you were to like, let's say be in a situation where you had to fight somebody that would most likely be, uh, you know, if you're trying to defend yourself, like if they fought you, that's one thing, but by you feeling like you need to fight somebody cause they said something. Now, a lot of times you're being triggered by what they said. And then you're, 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 uh, reacting emotionally off of that shit. So it's like all of that stuff goes, you know, that's what happens a lot of times when it, when it comes to you not only dealing with women, But just dealing with people in general. So it's a relationship between, you know, yourself and the, you know, what's outside of you and how you react to that. You see what I mean? So it's it's something that you got to practice because a lot of stuff that you're reacting to is very deep and it's ingrained into you to react in that way. You feel what I'm saying? So it's it's something that you got to really, you know, take heed to. You feel me? It's crazy, man. It's fucking crazy. I I think another quick thing, too, Mm. is... <clears throat> you got to stay focused on mm. you got to stay focused on your objective right mm. and and again this goes this this all this always goes back to you know your purpose and and you know knowing what you're about but you have to stay focused on your purpose and you have to a lot of times you have to take some time to check in with yourself even while shit is going on like you know, because somebody's going to do something to get you angry. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. But take just take a second to to ask yourself, like, is is yelling at this person or is fighting with this person going to get me closer to my objective? Exactly. Is it is it is it really what I'm about? You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's what you ask yourself. If is is fighting what I'm about? Is yelling what I'm about? You know what I'm saying? Like, who am I exactly? Because I I don't know if you ever heard the saying, but. It, it it goes the same goes it says don't argue with fools because people from a distance right can't tell the difference right exactly so they can't what tell that who's who right that means and 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 it, it has nothing to do with worrying about what other people think per se but the point of the matter is is that if you if you're over there yelling like if if there's somebody that everybody in the town knows is an idiot you see what i'm saying Mm-hmm. But they don't know you. You just came in from out of town. You brand new, and um, that guy is yelling, and then you're yelling back at him. Everybody, everybody that's seeing y'all fight is thinking that you're on the same intelligence level as the idiot, right? Because they don't, they don't really know you. But the point, the point is, it's not about the, the opinion that other people have of you. The real point is, is what's the opinion that you have of yourself that you would actually argue with this person. Mm-hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? That you would expel energy mm. to yell, to fight. Right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Right. Like, what, where are your values to make you make the decision to engage this person? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. So, like, 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 like you heard that you ever heard the term or you ever heard the phrase or the cliche, I'm not going to dignify that with an answer. Right. <laughs> right. It, it, it's the perfect, it's, it's the perfect phrase because it's saying, I'm not going to answer you because your conversation is not is not about what I'm about. But right. the need to answer you and engage you means I'm dignifying you. Like I'm mm-hmm. giving I'm actually giving you props. I'm giving whatever it is you're saying power by 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 um by in, engaging you by right. fighting with you, by debating with you. Mm-hmm. you. See what I'm saying? Right. So the point of the matter is you got to know what you're about. Know know your purpose. Know what your objective is, and Respond accordingly. So, if you know your objective is to get five numbers by the end of the night, and you go up, and you go up to you ain't get no numbers yet, and you you, you just out on you just came out and you holler at you holler at a girl, and then she starts yelling at you and calling you this and acting crazy. Right. All you got to do is say to yourself, "What's my objective? My objective objective is to get five numbers tonight from five different hot bitches." Right. Is is engaging this woman in this crazy conversation going to get me my numbers or should I, you know, back, back away and go find some other females to talk to? You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. Right. Sometimes you really got to stop in the middle of everything and ask yourself like, yo, what's, what's going on? You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Before you just, 
let because you probably thinking, oh, this bitch is disrespecting me in the street and everybody's looking at me and I gotta say something, and I gotta defend myself and blah blah blah. No, 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 right. no, no, no. You you let her you let her you know do what she's doing, but you gotta remember what you're you're trying to do. Right. Exactly. Real talk. Real fucking talk, man. And it, you know, it's 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 all about. And it, again, everything is really, you know, about how you react to the situation. You understand? Yep. And also because, like, even earlier in the, in, the, in the email, you know, you were saying like, you know, how do I not catch feelings? See, it's not about not catching feelings. It's like, and it's not about like you ignoring feelings because i think a lot of times people think well if i if i just don't got the feelings or i ignore the feelings then everything will be no it's not about that you you, you know sometimes you're going to feel a certain way about things you feel what i'm saying but it's oh, the 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 thing that matters is how you respond to the feeling you feel what i'm saying so you can be like oh man you know i'm really upset about something you're saying that to yourself i'm upset about this thing or this thing is bothering me or whatever or i'm feeling a certain way about this or i'm feeling these feelings that you you should acknowledge that because that's what's happening within you at the moment. Now, now that you acknowledge that, then you have to say, now what the the next thing I do, you understand, based off of this situation or based off of this feeling, is this thing that I'm about to do practical? You understand? Is this thing that I'm about to do? Does it make sense for me to do it? Is it going to benefit me? You understand? And so. That's the thing, especially, you know, as far as you being a man, you know what I mean? That's the thing that you, you know, you're supposed to be doing. See, women, they, women, female energy is about like their emotions is, is so strong that they, they, there's no filter. They react based off the emotion. Generally, a man, he's supposed, he feels the emotion, but he says, hold on, is, is, is what I'm about to do. Uh, a benefit or is it not? You feel what I'm saying? And which is why women even, you know, um, are into men in, 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 you know, in the first place because it's the yin and the yang. So she's like, I need for you to be on point because I'm not on point with that shit. You feel what I'm saying? That's what you understand. Know That's what it is. So you being a guy, you got to understand, hey, me uh, reacting a certain way, I have to be able to know how to filter what you know uh what i'm gonna do before i do it you feel what i'm saying and that's that's what it's about so look before we go uh, we're about to go on break but when we come back uh we're gonna be talking about reasons why you get rejected all right so you guys are listening to the bad boy show do you want to learn the easiest way to have more sex with more women then get the critically acclaimed book how to have sex with two women a day in this book, you'll learn everything you need to know about attracting and sleeping with beautiful women. That's how to have sex with two women a day. Get your copy today at MrLocario.com. That's M-R-L-O-C-A-R-I-O.com. MrLocario.com. Are you an actor who needs headshots? Do you have an event or a wedding coming up and you need a photographer? If you do, make sure you go to PavionPhoto.com. Pavion is a professional photographer who will supply you with high quality video and photography services for any event. Contact him at PavionPhoto.com. That's P-A-V-I-O-N Photo.com. PavionPhoto.com. Yo. We are back on the Bad Boy Show. Yeah, and today we are talking about reasons why you get rejected, all right? Because, you know, a lot of times guys, they're, you know, they're scared of rejection. Uh, they don't want to approach women because they're scared they're going to get rejected, all this other stuff. Like, rejection is this big thing. And, but so I'm going to, we're going to give you some reasons why you're getting rejected. And, you know, some reasons or in some ways that is going to help you to make the rejection happen less because rejection is always going to happen. Like that's what you got to understand is there's, there's no way around the shit, right? You're going to get rejected. You know what I'm saying? I can guarantee you this. You understand? Like, I, you know, what, what do they say? Uh, they say the only thing guaranteed in life is death and taxes. You understand? Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, it's death, taxes and rejection. You feel what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it's going to happen. So, you know, so you just gotta, you just gotta understand that. But the thing is, is that you want to be able to be in a situation where 
you're not getting rejected as much. You're getting more shit going for you, right? And so we're going to talk about some of that stuff today. So I got a few, you know, a few things here. So one of the things that we're going to talk about first, the first reason why you um, get rejected is because you are not confident, right? You're not confident. Mm. And and it's funny because every time we talk about confidence, it's it's I, I swear there's probably a dude listening to this right now. And he's like, oh, fuck that confidence shit. That confidence shit is bullshit, nigga. It ain't about confidence. It's about looks. And if you ain't got looks, you know, they're, they're, I already hear them, right? I hear you guys. I hear you already. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? Because <laughs> they always be on that shit. Oh, confidence is bullshit. It's about, you know, so they, they, they don't understand. And see, what you got to understand about this, the reason why a girl will reject you is because you're not confident. And this is, and, it, and it's deep. They got to understand something is that. A woman is attracted to your confidence, right? Because she wants what is the opposite of her, right? So in general, right? Because everybody, you know, has their insecurities here and there, whatever. But in general, women are, are, are more insecure. You understand what I'm saying? Just in general than, uh, you know, the average dude. You understand? Fuck what you heard. That's what it is. You understand what I'm saying? That's how it is. So when a woman is looking for a guy or she's talking to a guy and she's getting interested in a guy, what attracts her to him is that confidence because everything is yin and yang. You understand? So if she's feeling like, oh, I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm insecure about this. I'm insecure about that. She's looking for someone to, uh, to, you know, attach herself to. To so that she can have something to lean on. Do you understand? So she can have somebody to count on and depend on. You understand? So the thing is, so when she goes crazy and she's all out of whack and she's all this, she wants to be able to know that the guy she's dealing with can handle situations, can handle uh, pressure, can handle all the shit because she has a hard time handling that. So she needs somebody who can handle that. So now when she, when you approach her and you're not confident or you're talking to a girl and you're not confident, all she's seeing is a guy who can't handle the shit. So then she rejects you. You see what I'm saying? Because part of her attraction to you or the part of her wanting to, uh, you know, because when, when we talk about it on a deeper level, her getting with you essentially is her uh, giving you her vagina to procreate. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if she has kids with you and she's with you, is this guy confident enough to do what he needs to do for me and these kids? That's that's what it boils down to on the long run. That's what, and it's all it's all even though you're just meeting some chick and you're trying to smash or whatever, and she probably just wants sex too. The subconscious is thinking of all that extra shit. You feel what I'm saying? So when you con- when you're a confident guy, she's gonna be like, okay, damn, like this dude, I could depend on. So hell yeah, let's let's make this shit happen. You understand what I'm saying? But if you're not that confident guy, it's almost scary to her. She's like, I can't fuck with this guy when shit hits the fan or shit goes down. You know what's gonna happen? I can't depend on this motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? Because the thing is this: you gotta also understand this. She's thinking if you're scared to talk to me. If you're not confident enough to talk to me, like, what can you do for me? Because she's thinking to herself, especially, let's say you got a girl who's really insecure. She's thinking, listen, I ain't shit. I'm not shit. So if you're scared to talk to me and I ain't shit, then what the fuck do I need you for? You feel what I'm saying? And so she's going to reject you. You see what I mean? And so this is why dudes don't understand how important confidence is, is because the confidence is basically something that a girl's, you know, she she sees and she senses it, and she's like, "Damn, this guy, you know, I, I like." It's almost like she 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 almost needs to be around you in a certain sense. You see what I'm saying? Because those vibes you give off, it's that shit is like sunlight. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, okay, this motherfucker, I I I get that feeling when I'm around him. I feel. Uh, secure. I feel uh, protected. I feel good. You see what I'm saying? And that comes right. from your confidence. You see what I mean? And so the thing that the thing that you got to understand is that it, it doesn't you know, when you're when you're insecure or you have that negative attitude, because even sometimes when I, you know, I look at these videos, <laughs> like I look at our videos and I'll be reading a lot of the comments and a lot of dudes be having this super like you know, uh, either negative attitude or defeatist attitude. They're like, oh, you know, I've never met a girl in my life that likes me or 
you know, I have to pay for sex because no girl will fuck me or, oh, none of these girls want me. And it's just like, I'm reading it. I'm just like, dude, like, I mean, who, who wants to hang around that? You understand what I'm saying? Who wants right. to be around a person who's just like down all the time? Like, what was that fucking uh, cartoon? Um, uh, Winnie the Pooh, right? Didn't they have a character on there with the, the fucking mule or something? He was mad depressed all the yeah, fucking the time. Nigga. Uh, his name was Gino or yeah, shit. some shit. Hey, yo, every time the nigga got on the fucking screen, I'm like, ah, oh, this nigga? Like, like shut the <laughs> fuck up, man. <laughs> Same thing with what's that other cartoon? Um, uh, Peanuts with Charlie Brown. This right. nigga, yo, m- a lot of niggas out here is Charlie Brown. That's what. We, that's what. We- <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh my god! Like niggas is tra- they on that good grief shit, man? Like God, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and, I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, yo. Like, and honestly, honestly, you got to ask yourself, guys, honestly, if you were a woman, right, and you had the chance to choose between a confident guy and a guy who's always complaining, oh, woe is me, no girls like me, who would you choose? You feel what I'm saying? Right. Like, it, it's, it's simple. This shit is simple. You feel what I'm saying? So, but the thing is, when we talk, when we talk about confidence... You know, you need to know how to build that within yourself. And by the way, if you guys go to badboymembership.com, I have a whole program that goes over confidence and inner game, how to improve your inner game, 10 ways to build your confidence. I have a few of those on there on the bad boy membership. So, you know, just just in case you want to really, you know, make it happen. I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's there. You know what I mean? So, so you know, anyway. So another reason why you get rejected is you don't know how to talk to women. You understand? And this is very, uh, you know, an, an important thing. You got to understand, like the, the, the actual how of talking to women and understanding the social dynamics between you and a chick that you're talking to. Right. And so. A lot of times what happens is, is that guys don't know what to say. They run out of stuff to say. They don't know how to guide a conversation in a certain way. They don't know how to have that back and forth banter. They don't know how to, you know, transition from small talk to flirting. You understand? All these things is what's going to get you rejected. You understand? Because the thing is this, you got to understand something. When, when you approach a woman and you talk to her, she can tell if you're the type of guy who knows how to talk to women. She can tell and she can tell if you're the type of guy who doesn't know how to talk to women. You understand? In fact, I've had women, uh, you know, tell me up front that they knew that I know how to talk to women. They, like, I don't, and I'm like, why would they even say that? But they've said it to me verbatim. Like, yo, you, you, you really know what you're doing. You know how to talk to a girl. Like they've said this shit to me. You feel what I'm saying? So they understand what it is. So. When they recognize that you don't know how to or that you're super awkward, you don't know what to say, whatever, it's like it's a turnoff for them. Because remember, as a man, you are supposed to lead. So when you're even in a conversation, most of the times you're leading the conversation, even if she's talking a lot. A lot of times what you're doing is leading it because you're asking her questions to give her the opportunity to talk a lot. You see what I'm saying? You're still right. orchestrating that situation. So you know how to actually talk to a girl. Like I remember I was talking to this chick and like I must have said maybe like two or three sentences in within like a, a, a 20 minute conversation. But and she was one of the women that said, oh, you, know, you really know how to talk to a chick. And I'm like, OK, I, don't, I hardly said anything. I just asked you a few things. You feel what I'm saying? But again, that's right. how you you know, talk to them. Cause I, I even said, I had a video about this and I was saying that the girl should be doing most of the talking so that you can figure out what type of girl she is and you know what she's about. You could get that information. And when you ask people questions and stuff, uh, people's uh, favorite topic to talk about is themselves. You feel what I'm saying? So if you get the girl talking about herself and you're able to do that, and then you're able to transition into, you know, you closing a deal, flirting or whatever it is, then, you know, you're, in a better position to not get rejected. You see what I'm saying? Because again, you got to understand a a lot of these women, they've been approached numbers and numbers of the times, like so many, so many different times. So they've developed a knack for understanding what's going on. It's like, it's like this. 
let's say you're walking in the street. Let's say you're in a big city or whatever. You're walking in the street. You can tell the difference between somebody approaching you to ask you for directions and somebody approaching you asking you to donate money to some charity. You feel what I'm saying? Like you, you can tell the difference. You're like, oh, this motherfucker, he's gonna come up and ask me, you know, has I have I donated to save the children or whatever, whatever. Then you have another motherfucker that walks up to you and they're just like, Hey, do you know where such and such street is? Like you can tell the difference between those two types of people even before they approach you. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's the thing that women can tell is that they can tell the difference between a guy who knows how to talk to women and the guy who doesn't based off how he's doing it. You feel what I'm saying? And so that's the thing you got to understand, you know? So, you know, that's the second thing. You don't know how to talk to women. Now, the third thing we have here is you're not her type. You understand? And that's just, you know, (laughs) that's just like simple shit right there. Simple shit right there. You, and and, and you, it's simple shit. It's simple shit. Mm. But you need to talk about it because right. a lot of niggas is like they refuse to understand that fact. Right. Right. Exactly. You exactly. know, like yo, you're you're not for everybody, and everybody ain't for you. Like, right. Right. It's just the way it is. Every, right. Every puzzle piece don't fit together, bro. Right. It's just what it is, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because because the thing is, if a chick and you gotta understand something, a chick's type and even your type is an accumulation. Of what you've been conditioned to like. Do you understand what I'm saying? So her type. Let's say for example. A chick's been. You know. She grew up in a family where. Let's say she had a whole bunch of. You know. Her dad and her brothers were like. Stocky built men. You understand? She's probably going to end up liking stocky built men. You feel what I mean? Like if a. If a. If if a. Let's say if you. Had like a, a white chick. Who grew up about around a whole bunch of black people. You understand? She's probably going to end up liking black dudes. You feel what I mean? Like it, right. it, it just is what it is. So now if you're that white guy and you run into that girl, she might not even like you could just cause you white. You're not her type. You feel what I'm saying? So it, it, right. the thing is, is that you're going to get rejected, you know, just strictly off of that. Just the fact that, you know, she's just not feeling you based off of that one thing is just, you know, it doesn't turn her on. She's just not feeling it. And it's OK. You feel what I'm saying? Because this is and this is why there's other girls. And this is why we say you, you can charge chicks to the game. Don't really, uh, you know, take it personally. You know, just keep doing what you got to do. So, you know, if a chick's not your type, I mean, if you're not a chick's type, it is what it is. Just like there's certain chicks who aren't your type. There's certain women that you probably see that you know you wouldn't fucking uh, even let suck your dick. You feel what I'm saying? So, right. so, you know what I mean? So, like, like, like tiny. Oh my God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, you know what it is. It's, it, you know, it's certain things. This is, it, she ain't your type, right? Now, the next thing that gets you rejected is that you're giving her too much attention. So this happens when, you know, you get a girl's number and you're trying to set up a date or whatever. You Let's say you go on a date and then you end up calling her every day that week. You end up calling her all the time. You're, you know, you're, you're trying to check up on her. You're seeing what's good. You're hitting her up on Facebook. You're liking all her pictures on Instagram, all this other shit. And so you're giving her way too much attention. And then all that attention you're giving her is it's making her want to reject you. You understand? Because now you're becoming too, you're you're giving off that needy energy, that needy vibe, that, that vibe that, you know, you have nothing going on but her. And this is, and this is so simple that guy, you have to understand this. You have to understand this. A lot of you guys, honestly, honestly, a lot of y'all will do much, much better with chicks if you were a hundred percent more honest with yourself and I'm gonna tell you why, because if you were honest with yourself, you would not be giving a lot of these chicks so much attention. You understand what I'm saying? Because this is the thing. Most of you guys, when you see a chick, you think, Oh, she's bad. I was smash. Right. And you want to smash, but then you go up to her and then you pretend you don't want to smash. Cause you think that she's not going to want to just have sex. You understand? So right there from the jump, you're not being honest. You understand? Now, if you was being honest and you was letting her know, like, yo, let's get together, hook up. And then y'all did hook up. Right. And you already fucked her. Right. What happens a lot of times is, you know, unless you don't have a lot of experience. And this is why I tell guys to get experience. If you don't have a lot of experience, you're probably going to get uh, attached to her because you're like, oh, I fucked this chick and she was hot. And this is the first girl I really fucked and all that other dumb shit. Now, if you have experience, what's going to happen is you're going to fuck a chick and you're going to have sex with her. It's, it'll be cool. And you're going to be good. Right now. You might want to see her again, but you might want to see her, I don't know, next week, two weeks from now, who gives a fuck? But then you call her or text her 
Only when you want to fucking see her. You understand? But what other, what do a lot of guys do? They end up calling her and texting her all during, during the week and everything. Not necessarily because they want to see her, but because they feel like that's what they need to do to keep her interested. They feel like that's what they need to do because she wants that. They feel like that's what they need to do because that's what they're supposed to do. No, fuck that. If you were just doing whatever the fuck you wanted to do when you wanted to do it, that's when chicks will be fucking with you heavy. You understand? You know why? Because they want to follow you. You understand? And you is the person doing what the fuck they want to do, not doing what you think she wants you to do or doing the things you think you're supposed to do for her. And this is why you guys end up giving them so much attention because nine times out of 10, the only reason you're giving her that much attention is because you think you need to give her that much attention to keep her interested. You know how many guys that email me and they say, Miss Lucario, but I don't understand how, how, you know, how am I going to get her number and then not call her, uh, uh, you know, um, and you know i gotta wait till the end of the week how do i do that because if i don't call her then she's gonna lose interest in me i was like oh okay so the only reason you're trying to call her is so that she can be interested in you you're not you're not trying to call her because you actually want to talk to her you're only calling her because you're trying to keep her interested is that what you're telling me you see what i'm saying so now you're doing shit trying to keep her interested you're not doing shit because you actually want to fucking do it you see what i'm saying and so that's the thing if you guys want to keep women interested do shit whenever the fuck you want to do it you see what i'm saying and so (laughs) that's the thing you know what i mean like that's the whole thing you gotta understand it's like it's it's, yo oh man i mean it's getting too hyped with this shit man like because it's just like Dude, just it's, no, it's it, you know what it is. It, 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 it's rough. It's rough. It's rough because we've been we've been like, um, everybody's been like programmed a certain way. You know what I'm saying? Right. Everybody's right. programmed to be polite and mm-hmm. you know, like you know, not you don't want to make people angry and you don't want to do this and you don't want to do that. And then you bring right. all of that. I mean, and in general, that shit is cool because you know, in general, you want to be a good person. You know right. Right. You want you don't you know you don't want to offend anybody and so on and so forth. But when it when it comes to when it comes to um when it comes to relationships and trying to find somebody, mm. you see, see, you gotta remember, like, you wanna be you wanna be courteous and respectful and all of that shit to people in regular life, like right, your coworkers, right. you know, people who you might be doing business with, because there's a there's a you know there's a mutual benefit, but you're not in each other's lives. Right, exactly. You understand? You're not really in each other's lives, so. You only have to be so honest with them. You only have to be honest when it comes to whatever it is you're dealing with. Right. But when you're trying to find somebody who you're trying to make a part of your life, mm. you have to have you have to have a certain amount of honesty so they know what, exactly what the fuck they're dealing with. Right, right. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So it, it changes the dynamics of, of of how you of how you relate to that person that you're trying to you know get with or mm. that person that you're trying to date because. You know, you're trying to spend time with this person. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, in a certain type of way, you have to be you have to be way more honest than you would with you know just an acquaintance or right. a coworker or exactly. something. You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's why in, in in what you're saying, you know, do things exactly when you want to do it because mm. this person needs to know exactly what they're what they're in for, right. and they'll respect you for it more in the long run. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Real talk. And then and then the the attraction that you the attraction that you generate is more genuine. Mm-hmm. So then the, your overall interaction with that person is, is better. It's much, much better. Right. You see what I'm like, 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 like notice, notice how hard it is to like, you know, in a lot of situations, notice, notice how hard it is to actually, you know, meet up with your coworkers outside of work. Right. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like how, how hard it is to really like create a friendship with, with coworkers. Like, it's not. It's not real friendship. Like you've been put in a situation where y'all work together because y'all got to work to make money. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's not nothing. It's no, there's no depth to it. So it's like there's nothing. There's nothing real about it. So you're you know you're you're court you're courteous with them because you know you have a a common purpose that you have to fulfill and you know everybody got to make money keep the company going keep everything good so we could all make money and go home and pay our bills. Right. But when you're dealing with somebody where you you trying to have sex with them. You're trying to be in all in a personal space. You have to be a little bit more honest. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, right. So you have to you have to like push a lot of that, you know, courteous uh, 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 
uh, etiquette shit to the side a little bit mm. and let it and let and let you chicks know exactly what's good, man. Real, real talk. And, and and to illustrate this example, we could we could flip it to the women's side. You know, women do a lot of shit that they don't want to do to try to get something. So this is what, like, for example, women will do shit like they'll be with a guy. They actually want to have sex with him, but then what they'll do, they'll say they'll not have sex with him because they think, Oh, well, I, I guess I shouldn't have sex because if I, if I don't have sex with him now, then he's going to take me seriously. And then he might want to wife me up. So they're not, they're not, you know, not having sex because they don't want it. They're trying to not have sex because they're trying to get something else or they're trying to do something else that's not really them to get this thing. And then usually what right. happens is that the guy gets frustrated because he's like, yo, I want to have sex with you. And he can tell the girl wants to have sex with him, but she's not doing it. And then he thinks she's playing games and all this other shit. And he's like, all right, fuck out of here. And then so then she doesn't even get what she wanted now because she fucking was doing all that other shit. Now, if she would just did what she wanted, she could have had sex with a dude. And then by having sex with him, that guy could have been like, yo, I'm feeling this girl like the sex is good. She's cool. And I could, we could keep it going. You understand? Of course, there's going to be situations where there's going to be guys that's going to have sex with her and nothing's going to happen. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's her still doing what she wants to do that's going to get her closer to where she wants to go. You feel what I'm saying? Because right. she's doing it because this is authentic within her. So then she's going to find another guy that actually is authentic with, with, with her because that's what he wants also. So the same thing happens for you when you're doing your thing and you're just being honest. You feel what I'm saying? And then you find that girl who you're going to attract because she's attracted to what you're about. You feel what I mean? It's, it's, it's really that right. simple, right? Now, the next thing real quick, I got a few more, is the reason why you get rejected. And this is a, a thing that a lot of guys don't understand, and is, is that you're getting rejected because you keep approaching below average looking chicks. Okay? Now, mm. now let me let me explain this. Because <laughs> some guys are like, what? How do... And, 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 and a lot of guys understand this too. They be like, because they'll go up to a girl and they be like, yo, I don't understand why she why she acting like that. She ain't even that hot. Like, how does whack chick, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does, because certain guys, they'll deal with a chick because they think like she's like, I, you know what I'm saying? But they'll, they'll say, right. well, since she's I, then it's going to be easier because she's not hot. So then it's going to be easier for me to get her and blah, blah, blah. But then what a lot of guys end up finding out is that those girls are still difficult to get with. Cause I get emails all the time about this. And the reason why they're difficult to get with, and the reason why they're rejecting you is because most of those women think that you are out of their league. You feel what I'm saying? Mm. So that's, and that's why they're rejecting you. See, you got to understand something. Their insecurity won't allow them to accept you. Do you understand? Because they don't think they deserve you. You understand? Because they're like, why is this fly ass motherfucker talking to me? You feel what I'm saying? He could he could do better than me. That's what they're saying on a subconscious level. So therefore, they're like, oh nah, I'm good. Because they can't even they can't even fathom dealing with you or being successful in a relationship with you. So they cut it off immediately. They're like, hell no, I ain't fucking with you. Because then if they do fuck with you and they act actually like you, then it's gonna be a harder fall for them. If you diss them or you stop calling them or whatever. So they're trying to nip that shit in the in the bud before their emotions take over. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So 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 they're gonna reject you, you know, immediately. They're like, hell no. You see what I'm saying? And so sometimes you have to um, you know, understand how how women view you. You feel what I'm saying? Because you're probably thinking, oh, I'm just some regular guy and, you know, I'm not the best looking guy and blah, blah, blah. So I got to, you know, I'm going for these these twos and fours and fives on a scale of one to ten. And so you're, you're, you're lowering your standard because you think that's all you can get. And then these chicks are looking at you like, nigga, fuck is wrong with you you know what i'm saying like you could be out here getting these bad chicks or these hotter girls or these other girls that's a little bit more secure with their shit and they'll be more receptive to you your shit because i did yo let me tell you man i've been with fucking thousands of chicks and i'm telling you guys this from experience like i used to you know when they say you know like we saying dudes take one for the team nigga i was taking match it for the team i was just like yo whatever i don't give a yeah, fuck you know what I, I'm I, and i can i can i can vouch for that this nigga used to, uh, <laughs> exactly, uh, exactly. Like, let, me, let me say real quick just understand i need all y'all niggas to understand like who y'all really fucking with when y'all subscribe to mr lucario or y'all get on the bad boy membership y'all talking to a nigga right. that has been at 
both ends of the spectrum. Exactly. Homie. That's what I'm saying. Like, this nigga has fucked with bottom feeding, below five, damn near threes and twos. Exactly. Fat that have no self-esteem <laughs> all the way to, to bitches from Sweden who, who father own record companies. And exactly. Bad, bad chicks. You, you feel me? So... I need y'all to understand who y'all fucking with when y'all fuck with Mr. Lucario. Like, this nigga's done it all for real. And that's what I'm real, saying. So I'm telling y'all from from experience, dude, like, I've been with those average below. Like, if if y'all seen some of the chicks I've been with, dude, y'all be like, what? Like, y'all wouldn't need, y'all would fucking be like, y'all would shake y'all damn head. Y'all be like, you can't be serious. Like, nigga, you can't be serious, nigga. Like, it, and you know why I feel, you know why you would say that? Because even when I was with them, I was saying that to myself. I was like, nigga, you can't like, be serious. Nigga, you can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm telling Yo, that's you. That's what I used to say. That's what I used to say. Yo, I remember one time, I remember one time when you were still on some simp shit. Right. My nigga, and you came and you were talking to me about this. If, I don't know if you remember this girl, you met her at this barbecue or something over, um, in, I think we went to like a barbecue or a party over in Bed Stuy. Right. And she was um this 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 like skinny Dawson chick. Oh, I remember that chick. Kid. Yeah. And she yo, and she was like super annoying and she started like fucking nagging you and getting on you and y'all ain't even start fucking yet or something. It was right. like crazy. Right. And 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 um and I was looking at you like, yeah, well, yo, why is he even belly aching over this bitch? She's mad whack. <laughs> Like mad whack, like yo, I re- crazy, yo, I remember crazy. that shit, and it's like I, you, I think back on that now, and I'm just like that shit is hilarious because it's that's, cra- yo, it's, it's serious, man. It's serious. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Like you just look, cause and that's what I'm saying. Like yo, it, 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 in those chicks, and I've been with a few of those type of chicks, and it's just like certain chicks, they'll it, you know they'll either like reject me or I'll get with them, and it'll be an issue because. They know, like, okay, for example, I was with this chick one time, right? We at the crib, and she was she was basically whack. I give her, like, a fucking maybe five and a half or whatever. You understand on a scale of one to ten? Do you know this chick? So she was giving me a head or whatever, and I was, like, you know, trying to take the clothes off or whatever and all this other shit. And so she was basically, like, and we had the lights on. So she was, like, I need you to turn the lights all the way off. And, 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 and so that you can't see my body. Right. And oh, then, <laughs> and then, then she, didn't, she only wanted me to touch certain parts of her body. You feel what I'm saying? And then, then we didn't even get to fucking because <clears throat> when we was about to fuck, she was like, Oh, I don't feel comfortable because I feel like you, you're not going to like my body. You understand what I'm saying? Like her insecurity you understand? It, 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 it's, it's, it, it went, it was so crazy. You feel what I mean? And so I didn't get to do shit with this chick really because of that. You feel what I mean? And, and it's like, right. yo, and so I've been in those situations where, you know, it's, it was in that type of situation or situations where I'd holler at a chick and she would be like, nah. And it was like, I could tell that she was looking at me on some nigga. Come on, son. Like, what the fuck you? Because, <laughs> because like, even, what you want with me? right, like, exactly. Play games right. right. And, and that's what they would say to me too. They would be like, they would, cause I'd be like, yeah, girl, you know, blah, blah, blah. They'd be like, I don't believe you. You play, you say that to all the girls. Like I've, I've heard that shit from all these chicks. And it's like, they don't believe me. Cause they're thinking, what is a nigga like you trying to fuck with me for? You see what I'm saying? saying? And that's what's happening to a lot of you guys out there. A lot of y'all are are underestimating yourselves you feel what i'm saying y'all think that i'm telling you you got dudes out here who think they ain't shit and a lot of chicks Mm -hmm. will be fucking with them a lot of chicks will want you but you keep going for the low hanging fruit because you think that's all you can get you feel what i'm saying right and so that's why you keep getting rejected because those low hanging fruit is like, nah, nigga, you understand? <laughs> like you, this is not a, a, a correct fit. You need to upgrade, son. Like the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? So that's what it is, man. <laughs> that's what it is. So anyway, th- so I got two more things. So the, the next thing is the reason why you get rejected is because you expect to get rejected. You understand? Mm. So, so that when it, within itself, you know, since you expect for this shit to happen, it happens because you sometimes you approach a girl and you don't even think she's going to like you. You're just hoping that she's going to like you or you already in your mind think she's going to reject you. So then you act in certain ways that make her reject you. You see what I mean? It's just is really that simple. Your your actions are dictating to her that she should reject you. 
You feel what I'm saying? And that's coming from wow. you already thinking you're going to get rejected. You see what I mean? Like right. a lot of this shit is it's your mind state. It's your mind frame. You feel me? And then that's the thing that gets you rejected a lot. You know what I mean? In 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 you know when you're interacting with these chicks, right? Now, like like when the, when the nigga run up on a chick and say some shit like, "Hey, excuse me, miss, I'm sorry to bother you." Right. <laughs> and, and it's like um you you already in the mind frame that you're bothering me. So exactly. And you and you actually you. You put that out into the air. So what do you want her to think about? What do you right. want her to say? Right. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, oh, no, you're not bothering me. Like, I don't know you from nowhere. So maybe you are bothering me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Get the fuck away from me, nigga. Like, exactly. that's what you do to yourself when you, you, you know, and I don't, I don't know if you're going to touch on it, but that's another thing that, that you really got to get on. Mm-hmm. You have to um, think about your language, B. Mm-hmm. Think mm-hmm. about your language. Real talk. You know, you know, t- you know, talking to women and flirting with women is, is one thing, but you have to consider your language, the way mm-hmm. you express yourself. And you're the type of person that loves to use a lot of no and don't and did not and right. Like you, you, you have a lot of negative, uh, a negative words in your vocabulary. Then that's that's what's going to come to you. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Right. You know, because you got you got some people that will stand there and be like, yo, I don't like girls who do this. I don't like, like, imagine you meet a girl and you meet a, you, the only thing you have to say to her about your taste in women is, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like girls with weed. I don't like short girls. I right. don't like ugly girls. <laughs> so the, the point I'm trying to make is that change your language. Mm-hmm. If you hear yourself saying, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this. Just concentrate on the things that you do like. Right, exactly. You see what I'm saying? So you can so when you're speaking and expressing yourself, you can say, Oh, I like girls that do this. I like girls that have this. I mm-hmm. love girls that do this. Right. And I love girls that do that. You right. don't have to waste energy, time and, and and thought on what you don't like. Just concentrate on what you do like and express yourself accordingly. So you can you can lead with positive vocabulary, positive a positive way of carrying yourself and the positivity will rub off on the situation. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because right. Imagine you tell a girl exactly what you like and she'll probably, even if, even if she quote unquote rejects you, you never know. Y'all might become friends and then she'd be like, well, since I know this is what you like, I can introduce you to my home girl over here. Right. Exactly. Just like that. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Exactly. Exactly. Real talk. Real fucking talk, man. I'm telling you guys, is is you know, that 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 game is also this is serious, man. You gotta understand all this shit, man. And so the last thing I wanted to talk about, you know, the reason why you get rejected, and I, I sort of mentioned it earlier, is that it's part of the game. You understand? Mm, so that's rookie. that's what that's like you, you what you really gotta understand. And, and and this is what we're talking about where, you know, we always always talk about the yin and yang and the balance of life the duality of shit is that in order for you to be able to get women, right? In order for you to get a girl, you, there has to be rejection. You understand? Like there's no way you can get women without rejection actually being part of the spectrum because everything in life has the balance. You understand? So you, you can't have, up without down you can't have left without right you don't understand man without women you don't you know um understand hot without cold you don't understand cold without hot so you don't understand getting the chick without understanding not getting the chick you understand what i'm saying right so you can't have that without the other you see what i mean so when you understand that that within itself should eliminate your fear of rejection because you have to say okay well this is part of the process you feel what I'm saying? That's part of the whole process of the game. So it's not like, oh, well, you know, oh, I got rejected. So and it, it's it's bad and it's evil and it's because of this and because of that. And I got to figure out a way to never get rejected. I'm never going to talk to a girl ever again unless I don't get rejected. I got to find the formula. I need the formula. Like, no, you're going to get rejected. So when it happens, be like, cool, whatever. That's good. You understand? Like, it's supposed to happen because in order for you to get the girl, the next girl, that is what needed to happen. You understand? That's what needs to happen in general. It has to happen on a spectrum of this is what happens in life. So, you know, in order for you to be able to get the chick, you understand? The feeling of the, that feeling you get when you actually get the chick's number and y'all go out and everything like that, that feeling 
only arises or only happens in juxtaposition to the opposite of that feeling. You know what I'm saying? Or the opposite of right. those situations. So if you understand that, that's part of it. That, you know, it, it's like, like I always use the coin, um, you know, uh, analogy. Like you got heads and you got tails. But it's two sides of the same coin. You understand? This is two sides of the same game. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to understand that you can't have one without the other. It's like if you say, hey, give me that quarter, but I only want I only want the, the head side of the quarter. You can't have the head side of the quarter without the tail side of the quarter. You can't have the girl without having a situation where you can't have the girl. Do you understand what I'm saying? So right. you have to understand that aspect. So stop being scared of rejection. Stop. You know what I'm saying? You got to understand that that's part of the game. Once you know that, then it's not going to be like this big sting and this big thing. If you get rejected, you understand? So you guys got to understand that aspect of the game and then it'll be, you know, a little, you know, a little bit more tolerable for you because you understand that aspect of it. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. So anything else you want to say, uh, miles, before we get up out of here? Bad boy membership. That's Bad what's up. Oh, by the way, I'm looking at my my alerts on my phone because I get alerts when uh, you know people join the membership. So we just had another person join the membership. So congrats to that. You feel me? Yeah. So guys, man, I'm man. telling you, y'all got to get up on this membership. And also remember, I have uh, you know audio programs. I have the ultimate guide to getting over your fear of rejection, so you can you know uh, go and watch that on the Bad Boy membership right now okay so make sure you guys join the bad boy membership all right so that's pretty much it we are out of here guys we will see you next time and remember the truth is inside you peace we go on later peace hey what's up it's dating and life coach mr locario go to badboymembership.com and master the dating game by joining my bad boy membership program in this program you'll receive 45 through 90 minute easy to follow step-by-step dating advice tutorials that's guaranteed to help you attract date and have sex with beautiful women join the bad boy membership today by going to badboymembership.com that's badboymembership.com